Like 5% of golfers are just giving shots away on the golf course. It's making the game not as much fun. Your friend, who's not as good as you, is not making these mistakes, and then they're often beating you. A friend of mine, Steve Buzzer, and myself, we're going to share with you some simple fixes to stop you making these common on-course mistakes. These are low-hanging fruit fixes. So the first one, we're going to miss short putts. Hopefully not many, but we're going to miss some. And when we do, we need to be able to handle the emotional roller coaster the golf's going to throw at us. Don't be this guy. So, well, stop. Let's breathe. Pre-shot routine, going through some routine, even though it can be boring when you're playing well, even it can be boring to go through it each time. But having a system, an amount of practice swings, even when you're really flustered, maybe taking one more and slowing things down. This won't cancel out bad shots, but it won't make the emotional roller coaster win. You're gonna win. You're gonna stay in control. You're gonna try and make controlled actions that might just squeeze some better shots out of every situation rather than letting the emotions take control and just wrecking the next shot. Making the mistake, yes, it's annoying. Doing another one on top of it because you're upset, that's just crazy. Next low hanging fruit is having the right clubs, learning the right patterns when playing into or downwind. In this example, we're gonna look at into the wind shots. So this is 170, but it's into the breeze. Good skills to have. So I'm gonna hit a chippy six, you're gonna hit a seven. I mean, you are a bit longer than me with your irons, but having a bit more club hitting soft into the wind can be a skill that's useful, can't it? Um, especially if you're somebody that tends to overspin, maybe someone who loses the ball to the right, overspinning ball plus the wind, disaster. Yeah, I got all of that. If it makes me think your shot's a shot. Oh. See, it's drawing as well, so I'm working my shape in. So obviously choosing the club wisely is something that hopefully you're already starting to think about, but I think it's something you can think about more in hitting more clubs soft, those kind of ideas that might just push through the wind a little better. Other thing to work in again with my shot is that when you hit these different shots, so more club, Remember to work that shape in. It might not always be the same shape that you game as a regular basis. And that's one of the huge mistakes I see amateurs make. They play the same aim or shot for their soft one, but that one tends to draw when they tend to hit other shots pretty straight. And then they wonder why they're always missing them on the left. Work those shapes in, learn to manage that wind. Your scores are gonna drop. So when we find ourselves in a short-sided chipping around the green area, we see huge mistakes made by everyday golfers by just trying to be too cute. Let's show you my little trick when I'm short-sided to give me the best chance of up and downing or not having a disaster. Getting the ball on the green is gonna be so much more valuable than missing and staying short-sided again. In these situations, a great thing that I do and I get my amateurs to do, I try to slam dunk them. So the perfect shot here is to like land it here and it run down, but I'm just gonna try and slam dunk it knowing that if I'm 10 foot, 15 foot past over there, it's gonna be better than being short sided with on the miss. So really great result, but I actually landed that short and that's often the problem. So what I'm doing is I'm picking a further on target the slam dunk, knowing that if I hit my short one, I'm gonna hit a miracle great shot and everyone's gonna think I'm brilliant. I'm actually, this is like my best scenario from an under hit shot. I'm playing my bigger percentages. Three wood for safety off the tee where maybe you should be hitting your driver. Me and Steve are gonna show you a classic example of where so many of us are getting this wrong. So narrow fairway, but there is actually more room tree to tree up there than we, uh, what people will see. I think people focus too much on the fairway and I need to hit the fairway. You don't, you need to be able to find the ball. Let's do a good example. You've got your driver. Got driver. And I'm gonna do three wood. the three wood for safety ideas. The hole's measuring 420 yards. 420 yards. So I would not play this way but just to illustrate the point. So I'm 171 yards out and having hit a seven iron into a very small green. Oh, and that's gonna short side and it's not even that bad a shot. Yeah, 129. Look, I've missed the fairway. So you're in the rough and you're actually close to the I'm close, jungle. But, but I, I think this is as far, this is right on the left-hand side of my dispersion. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it, I, I would say this kind of justifies the play more so than makes me want to hit three wood. Well, after both situations played out, what was so interesting is Steve could hit a target much more directed at the flag, and he even missed his target 
arguably a bit more from where I missed my target, yet he still stayed on the green. I wasn't that far away from the hole, but because I was that little bit shorter, but to the right, hitting more club in, I just couldn't get away with that miss and I was short-sided and had no real shot. Leaving the tougher second shot just to make sure you hit that fairway when often there's more room than you think, more spaces you can hit where you can keep that ball in play and have a third, uh, second or third shot into a green depending on what hole it is can be so much more beneficial than just laying back, leaving too much in because you want to hit that fairway. Let's talk about lies, specifically bad lies, and what you do and how you deal with them. So Steve, water on the left, horrible lie, you're about 130 out, I guess you're gonna shift your target way right. So I'm going right, and this is a good example where I hit like a pretty good tee shot, so I feel like I've got unlucky, and I've got to put that to one side and yeah. go, look, let's play the situation. Got to now go over here, even, even with a wedge. Yeah. Um, if it was any more, we're probably going to be laying up. We were 200 yards out, like amateurs are picking three woods from there. This is like a seven iron hack out, get back in play, isn't it? Oh, 100%. If you're hitting a three wood, long iron, even a hybrid, people go, oh, hybrid will get through that. Yeah. It will not. Yeah, you need a lot. But Best for you, because you can reach, you're going to use more shift of target. Yeah, and I'm going to put the ball back in the stance just to try and like gouge it out a bit. Yeah. Good safe play, not the best strike in the world, but it'll work over on the angle, won't it? So Steve has not hit a green, he's only a wedge out, but he's happy that he's up by the green now with a chance to make a par. He is literally getting that ball as close to that green, to that hole as possible by avoiding any of the danger, just trying to completely take it out of play. Wise choice of clubs, really study your lies and definitely move your targets away from the danger, from good lies, but even more when the lie isn't good. Coming up short is a problem for everyone. Yes. Even the likes of us. It happened to us once. <laughs> so this is 154 middle, but it's 180 something to the back. So I have nine iron. Yeah. But I was afraid of going long, but see, you've given me that longer number to the back. Makes and a big there's difference, no way it? I'm hitting that club there, so I'm probably now going to come up short. I've got the exact same issue. I'm going 159 with my clubbing, where the 183 back measurement, I reckon this is much closer like a 170 club. I'm going up as well. The thing is with doing that, Steve, isn't it, is that I'm stood there not, I'm thinking this is flying the green. You've got to just trust your numbers. Got to, got to trust it. And sometimes thinking back edge isn't the worst idea. Yeah. We don't want to play for our best shot. We want to play for like our average shot. Totally. So you're still not quite pin high. So I'm still a little short. But did, did I hit it perfect? Was it a 10 out of 10? But I don't want to have to hit a 10 out of 10. Because yeah, we're not going to, Good thing, we? if I was a club less, I then go down, I, I take a bad bounce, it goes in the bunker. And you're short-sighted. Short-sighted, I start saying really angry things. Yeah. I got mine past the pin, but I had to absolutely rip it. That was my top yeah. end. That was a 10 out of 10. Yeah. That was a 7 out of 10. We're and both on the green. You're closer. 150, was it? 160? Yeah. We're not expecting a 2. We've taken all the trouble out. You know, we want our rounds to feel smooth. We don't want to, We don't want those big spikes of adrenaline because we're, you making know. Making silly mistakes. Yeah, we don't want to live on the edge of our seat, do we? And look, we're just making it simple. Let's talk recovery 101. We're all going to hit it in the cabbage. The garbage, the bundu, the bundocks, whatever we call it. So situation number one, should you thread it through the gap or should you just chip out sideways? Now, this is something you're going to have to think wisely on, weigh up those risks and rewards. Lots of golfers, many golfers are not skilled enough to thread it through, even though you might see maybe us doing it on the YouTube channel or you might see the pros doing it. Club face control has to be really good to get it through small gaps. If you're going to hit a ball at the tree and it comes back, nearly hits you, you're not getting out of that trouble, you're just putting error on error. Think about moving that ball into play. It's got to be 95% in back in play. If you've only got a 10% chance of getting it through that gap, let's just get it back in play. Next one, I see this one happen over and over again. What club should you use? What club should you chip out with, subject to the situation you're in? So we're on a bit of sand here. Generally, when you're in this trouble, it's long rough, it's sand, it's loose stuff, it's not very nice lie. Loads of people just go for their wedges because they're going to hit a small shot. Trouble with wedges is they're easy to dig and duff, those kind of ideas. Don't be afraid to use a hybrid. I use my chipper, a five iron, a six iron run, whatever it is. If you're going to keep it low in most occasions, this is what happens because you're going under stuff. 
use a lower lofted club. Even if you can get height, but you're on a scrubby lie, duffing it and keeping it on there is going to kill your scores. Don't be afraid to mix those clubs up. And the last one, if you are chipping out with any kind of angle slightly forward, remember the further you go, the closer you get to that green, the easier the next shot will be. So lots of golfers, I see them just chip out, like they can see the ground in front of them, so they just chip out to that part where if you were to chip it 50 yards further on on the same angle, you might find that you're 30 or 40 yards closer to the green. And that will have an effect on your scores over time. The closer you get to that green with your next shot, the more chance you've got hitting that green and then getting up and down from there. Think wisely about your chip outs. Sometimes we're angry, the emotions are in play, and people are just bunting it back into the course. What you'll find with the better players is they're not. They're constantly trying to edge any little advantage that they possibly can. May it be from choosing the right club, chipping it out further sideways, and not taking on those tiny gaps. If you enjoyed this video, you're gonna love this video where I help people improve their strikes with their irons. It's helping so many of you, and thanks for all the comments. Check this video out if you wanna improve your iron striking.